Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Oh, Good my. evening. Good evening. You know what? It's almost Christmas. I it can't is. believe it's almost Christmas. It this is. year has flown by. I'm Thank glad goodness. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because it's, I, mean, I got to run around. You know how guys are. We got to run around the last minute to get people stuff. <laughs> This, well, is, you know. this is our guest, Birdleg Pittman, number Bird 96. Voice he's that's coming his in voice. We'll, we'll show him in, uh, in a little while. Uh, Birdleg is our 96th guest. So Cindy and I are two women from Sonoma County, and we've had a fun journey to get to the point where we are right now. We started out with our jewelry, and then we got into interviews, and now... Oh my gosh, we've interviewed. We have Bird Lake Pittman. We have interviewed. Oh my gosh, Walter, Walter Trout. Yeah, Walter Trout, Andy Santana. We have interviewed Terry Hank, Ruben Valtiera, Eliza Niels. Elvin Bishop. Elvin, Elvin Bishop, Bishop is not coming, yet. He's up. coming up. Willie Jordan, Tony <laughs> Saunders. Tony Saunders wrote our theme song. Thank you so much, Tony. Sure. We love you. And we uh, have. We like where we're going. We like interviewing people. We like reaching out. And Cindy has start created a Patreon page for us where if you like, you can donate $10 a month to the Bling Sisters and you get some free prizes and you'll help us upgrade our equipment. Like Well, uh, the $10 a month doesn't have merch. It has a, uh, after three months, we have a 15-minute interview with you. Oh. Ooh, okay. So, that sounds uh, go fun. Go to the Patreon page. Here's a link. So, we are Silver Shells. I'm Silver Shells. This I'm, is Silver Shells Bling Party. Uh, wait. I'm Cindy Jenkins. <laughs> and apparently, it is Silver Shells <laughs> Bling Party. It's mine. It's all it's mine. It's all her party. Look for the red light in the upper left hand corner. If it's on, we're live. And look for your notification bell on the right hand side. Uh, it's different places for iPads and for different devices for different devices. Yeah. So, all right. Um, well, I think it's time we bring in our, yeah, come on guest. bird Lake 96. Uh, yes. Number 96. Here we go. Yeah. Hello. I thought, bird say, <laughs> I thought you were going to say that I was 96 years old. No, 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 no. no you're 96. <laughs> not, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Probably in your no. what? Early seventies. I'm in my early seventies now. Yeah. Okay, good. And yeah. so you're still, you're still playing. Just oh yeah, I'm playing. That's as long as I'm alive, I'm playing. Yeah. Unless I got the big C and can't do anything, but I mean, as long as I can move and breathe, it's all it takes. That's all it takes. Well, you were born in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and uh, uh, 
your paternal grandfather played a national guitar. Is that correct? National Did- steel, Mississippi National Steel Guitar. Just like Troy Redfern. First time I've ever seen one in my life. And I didn't really know what it was until long after he died, I realized that was what he was playing. Yeah, the Nationals yeah. are gorgeous guitars. So did and you... Please, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. I was, plus, I got the idea. Uh, Taj Mahal kind of brought me back into a lot of the old blues, too, mm-hmm. you know, which included my grandfather and his cronies. And they were playing around with Bob Wills in, like, 1905 and six and all that kind of stuff, you know. Wow. So, my grandfather was mostly a country blues musician. So. Mm-hmm. Well, because that's all they had. Where you lived when you were young, right? Was no, it was uh... no, 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 no. They had jazz. They had rock and roll. You remember now? I'm the guy that grew up with. I saw the birth of rock and roll. Yes. And what you see as the birth of rock and roll was not what I saw. <laughs> okay. I I, I feel okay. that. So so uh, tell me about what you saw of the birth of rock and roll. I saw Count Basie, Cab Calloway, uh, Big Joe Turner. I saw all these guys years later, but I saw them when I was a kid. Not, not them. I saw them, uh, you know, they were on TV sometimes, and I would catch, you know, uh, what's his name? Who's my favorite? Uh, uh, well, I can't remember that now, but a lot of those guys were my favorite players, and Louis Armstrong was a big influence on my playing, but nobody knows that. Really? Because nobody's used to that. Okay. Yeah, because Louis, Louis Armstrong had this way of, uh, you know what, what resolving is in music? No. That's when, you con- that's when you conclude the steps that you need to conclude, and then you come back and you start all over again. Okay. That's called resolving. Okay. Okay. Well, well uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 Louis Armstrong never really resolved. Okay. So when the, when the band went to the one, he was on the five somewhere or the seven or something, <laughs> wherever he wanted to be, right? So the band was ending up catching up with him uh-huh. because, they, because they missed that last beat. You know, band, and, 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 and that was out. <laughs> so they, the band could do it, but Louis didn't do it. And I caught on to it. I said, you know, that probably worked pretty good in harmonica. I've been doing it for years. Well, you're self-taught. You uh, did you play music when you were lo- y- younger before you turned twenty six? Oh, you... oh, yeah. I claimed it, but I didn't know how to play anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that was my that was my big kind of turning point in my life when I was in college, and I hated college. They were just as bigoted as their parents. They were just stupid, right? They may have had brains enough to get to school, but these people were. Uh, I mean, Shippensburg. University now, it was a stupid place to be. <laughs> I'm so sorry. How long did how long were but you no, there? But, but, that, but if one thing leads into another, Shippensburg led into me actually picking up the harmonica. You know? Okay. Because after after Taj Mahal inspired me uh, to actually want to play an instrument to criticize, so I went around and found a music store. I just ran into it by accident and I bought a harmonica and I have not stopped buying them ever since. You know, somebody owes me some big money because I play this stuff all over the world. I don't just play like in Austin. I've never survived. Right. You know? So I go to different countries to play all the time, except when this dang on COVID virus stole so much money from Bird Lake. And oh, I know oh that's my goodness. I'm so sorry. People. Do you have a Venmo or a PayPal account that we can put in the comment thread? Well, I don't really have, I don't have that kind of stuff. I mean, um, because we don't use it. I hey, I, we have John Lee Hooker Jr. remembering you. He came into John Lee Hooker, jail. Jr. John yeah. Lee Hooker Jr. History. He's in here. You realize how many people I got history with? Yeah. My my music my hit music history in the Bay Area. You know who it began with? Who's that? Willie Dixon. Willie Dixon picked me out. I walked into the Keystone Berkeley, and Willie Dixon. He's a big man, right? You know, that stuff that they showed Cedric the Entertainer doing it. Cedric the Entertainer would never be Willie Dixon because he wasn't six foot seven or six foot eight. And I know because he stopped in. Cedric the Entertainer stopped in at Everett and Jones to jam with me. We jammed some serious James Brown. So I'm not a guy looking for heroes. I'm a guy who comes from heroes. That is right. So when you took up the, the uh, harmonica, are you a natural 
did you what, what, uh, what? a natural you know did you understand it right away oh, or no, did you have no, to really no. work on it you know you know what 99.3 quarters percent of these people out here that are playing music had to learn the dance so people can give you see and that's what i tell my students i'm not going to teach you how to play play somebody else's music i'm going to teach you how to play what's in your heart and what's in your mind you know i'm going to show you how to do probably what you already know how to do but i'm going to show you better you know that's and some so good that's, confidence yeah. i like it yeah and yeah. look i've been you know how long i've been playing Almost 50 years. 50. Mm. Yeah, wow. As a matter of fact, wait a minute. No, no. In two years, it would be 50 years that I've, since I picked up the harmonica. Wow. And, and, and you've met so many people. You met, did you play with John Lee Hooker? No, I never played with John Lee Hooker. Never played with Albert Collins. Never played with Albert King. Never played with B.B. King. I always played with Bird Leg and the Tight Fit Blues Band because that was my my condition for doing anything. I didn't want to be up there playing with these stars. Yeah. I wasn't no star. I didn't belong there. I'm there now, though. <laughs> You're yes, there you now. Are. Yeah, yes, whether you, you want to be or not. And I think, you know, you want to be. No, I wanted to be. Yeah. Where I am is where I want to be. Well, good for you, and I'm glad you're where you are. Well, I think we should talk about our first video a little bit. Draw in your lip. Can oh. you tell us a little bit about that, Bert? Okay, good. See, every song has a history behind it. And I was uh, one of my mentors in Oakland named Cool Papa. Cool. Used to do this song called Draw in Your Lip. And I liked the song, but I didn't like the way his band did it, you know. And he did it something kind of, you know, something kind of like making it funky, but the guy didn't have a funk bone in his body. He's a blues man. An old time blues man. Anyway, so when I heard him do Draw on Your Lip, I said, wow, there's something in that song. I hear something different, right? So years later, when I started getting respect from people and everything, and I could say something and not be put down about it, I asked Cool Papa if he would uh, uh, mind if I did Draw on Your Lip. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. I, so, you know, I, I called it to my band, to showed them what I wanted. And then I was doing this concert in Koopapa by then. He had lost one leg, so he wasn't moving around too much. And he came to the show. All right. And I think I, I think he was allowed to play the show. I think he played before me, naturally. They all have to play before me because I'll kick their butts. <laughs> you know, I, got too, I got too much energy for these people. You have you know? a lot of energy. Yeah. I'll attest to you that. You said you inherited it from your mom. No, no shit. That's the only place I can consider giving it because God don't screw women. You know, as far as I know, but all okay. I'm saying is that I got it from my, I know I got it from my mom and dad, but I didn't get the music thing from them. And okay. one, thing, one thing I heard also is during a performance, you lose five pounds. Is oh, that I correct? I probably don't have five pounds to lose now, but right. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, but you think you can, you lose that water weight. Yeah, you sweat it out. Because, look, when I say go to work, I don't mean go up there and stand in a certain you know, little circle or go to that's not work work is when you move like james brown when you move like you know all these other guys wilson pickett all these guys i saw didn't, i didn't know him but i saw him you know yeah. you work physically just as much as mentally okay well now, let's your people they work more mentally than they do physically you know well, we're now gonna... the physical person that works and knows how to move is much more sexier than some guy standing up in my you, you got know, that right trying to so yeah. we're we're gonna check it out. Let's do it. Let's let's, let's do roll it. it. Come on, bird leg. But I know you now, sweetheart. Little song from from the bird leg CD on Dow Tone Records. One, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. June Juarez. And she takes pictures of everybody. I probably would not be where I am right now if it weren't for her photos. Thank you, dear. I love you. The wife loves you too. And the people are always, you know, praising musicians. But there's a lot of people behind us. Jim is one of them. We got Paul Sapper, we got a whole bunch of people that make this whole thing click. More, Emma, more, 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 more. Oh yeah, Mr. Edmund House. Yes, indeed. Now he's a consummate photographer. Him and you, Mr. House, I forgot you were back here. I was in, I was in my zone. We are doors. back. I'm Silver Shells. I'm Cindy Jenkins. And we are the Bling, the Bling Sisters. Sisters. And you're watching our show, The Bling Sisters Live. Well, you're the Bling Sisters. We're the Bling Sisters, yes. This is Silver oh. Shells Bling oh, Party. Oh, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I did. I, I must have. 
Yeah, yeah, I thought you said the Blue Sisters. I was wondering how that happened. The Blue the, yeah, Sisters. No, no, oh, no, yeah, no. that would be great. We're the Bling Sisters. The Bling Sisters. The Bling Sisters like the, the Blues. I, I saw you guys connected with K.E., you know. I mean, he does a lot for us. He puts us on all kinds of stuff like that, you know. So that's probably why I answered you when you first got in touch with me. That's oh, nice. Cool. Thank you. Cool, cool, but cool. But I'm glad I did. Yeah, me too. So do you want to talk about Eli's Mile High Club? That was a, oh, seems like it was a big influence on you at a, a certain time. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. We were a big fuel influence on it. You, oh, good. Let okay. Me real, let me tell you the real story. You tell me the story. Well, back in 1977, I was looking for a place to jam. And I was walking around. And I didn't know anything about Eli's, but I walked right up to it. And it said, Eli's Mile High Club. There was no choice key. There was none of these white guys running it there. It was Eli himself. Uh, it was, I forgot his last name, but anyway. And Eli was kind of popular because he had the only club uh, within a few blocks of each other. That was back when Oakland had a club on every damn corner. You know? Yeah. So anyway, so I go into Eli's, and there's this guy playing. What was his name? What's his name of his bone, uh, band? Uh, Roscoe? Oh, what the? Uh, Roscoe, Roscoe, Roscoe and the Rockets. That's who was playing there. And Roscoe had this grab the voice and said, Hey, bird, yeah, don't worry about what they say, man. Well, don't worry about it. You just go ahead and keep playing. You know, that's the kind of guy he was there. Yeah. And uh, then what happened was, I guess two years later, I was still going to Eli's. And uh, one day I was sitting, I, I had got an apartment right across the street from Eli's. I thought that was cool. And so I could just step out the door and go to Eli's, right? So one night I was laying down, I was watching TV, and I heard these shots. And I knew it had to be from Eli's because it was, you know. So I got up and I ran out and ran across the street in my bare feet, <laughs> you know, trying to see what happened. Uh -huh. And Eli's girlfriend killed him no. because he wouldn't leave his wife or some kind of stuff. Usually it's the other so way around. The, huh? Usually it's the other way around. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what made it so unique. <laughs> the girlfriend kills the wife over the... The girlfriend kills... The man the over, the wife. over the wife. Yeah. yeah she, she didn't have no legal fight at all. She'd go straight to jail. But yeah. she only did it like a couple, couple years in jail or something like that. That's tragic. You know? But, you know, that's... Yeah. What you Some get? You gotta, you gotta pay to play. You gotta pay the, pay the piper. Yeah, and then after that now, then Choice Key comes in. Choice Key used to come and sit us, sit in with all of us at places like the Deluxe Inn, the Cozy Den, uh, Three Sisters. He loved me, Sisters. Right? And we were all musicians together. Things changed when we got to uh, 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 Eli's. Number one, Choice Key's father helped him buy that. He didn't buy that outright. He got his help to buy Eli's. Help. Okay, and... and it was a, a, the owner was dead, so it was just sitting there anyway. So he brought us all in there, and we all played it. Um, but I said, I got the feeling that it was like a colonization kind of thing. I thought they were colonizing the black community. Mm -hmm. I really did. You know, I learned to like Choice Key, but I haven't forgotten that because I have to keep my, I'm a, I'm a blues torchbearer. There's a lot more to me than you guys will ever know. You right. Know? You, you, so, and it has nothing to do with how good I am or how bad I am. I'm talking about my job is to promote the blues and promote those who want to play the blues. Right. Know? And those who are playing the blues now, promote them too. Because we don't get enough promotion. No. Right. I mean, what you're doing now is a very unique thing, and I thank you for that. But, um, And I want to be responsible to my entire genre on this. It's not just about bird leg. It's about what bird leg likes, you know. And what I do for what I like. As a torchbearer, I gotta lead the charge. Right. I gotta take those young kids and sit them down and say, I ain't your dad, but I'll tell you what, I probably got more sense than he does. Let's talk. Hmm. <laughs> well, you... well, I probably wouldn't say it that way, but I'd be thinking that way. Probably. Well, you go into schools and you teach and play and you do seminars on the blues. Well, yeah, sure. If it's, if it's blues, I'm there. Somebody wants to be there for blues. I mean, I'm not cheap, but I'm there, you know. <laughs> mm. Yeah, because, you know, the biggest thing about a blues musician, we make 
The only people that make less, I think, are jazz people and dancers. And and, they're, and, they're, and those groups are fantastic. You know? Well, I'll tell you, dancers don't get paid a lot. I, I don't get paid very much. Oh. That's what, that's what I was saying. They get paid less than musicians often. Mm -hmm. you know? And then uh, you had a hard, hard, uh, uh, being a harmonica player, you said earlier you, you don't get much respect. You're the last hired, the first fired. But I don't think the blues oh, would be the same without hard well, players. Well, see, I'm going to tell you what they've gotten to. They've got to, gotten totally used to these white harmonica players that are not blues people. You know, and they promote them. They don't promote a guy like me. I'm the best. I'm one of the best in the world. Yes, you are. You know, because because I'm playing my own thing. Right. Nobody like nobody likes to hear what I was playing when I was young. Well, relatively young. <laughs> you're you're better you know, now. 20, 20, 20, what? Twenty eight, twenty six. When I started playing, yeah. Okay, nobody wants to hear you when you're 26, I'm telling you. you know. But now they've created all these heroes. There's an unnecessary need for phony heroes. You know, you go to war, you come back, they call you a hero. When my parents went to war, they came back, they went back to the ghetto. So all this stuff about calling people heroes for killing other people doesn't work with me. No. You know, you know Bird Lake, I feel the same way. Yes, yeah. it's it's hard. It's, it's a hard it. one because people want to do the right thing, and everybody yeah. thinks differently. And people are really honorable, and they want to go and be honorable, and it's really yes, just a do. tragedy. We all want to be, but the thing is, is that we have to learn to be. We've been brainwashed from the time we were at birth. Do you think if you were never taught about God, you think you'd ever believe in God? Me. No, <laughs> no, no, none of us would. Deep down in your heart, if your parents never told you anything about God, you never met a preacher, you would not believe in God because you wouldn't even believe, you, you, you wouldn't even, he wouldn't be part of your concept of life. Mm -hmm. But they made these God figures as part of conflicts in your life. And I'll tell you what, I'm not a racist, but I'm not going to get down on my knees and pray to a white God. I don't give a shit. My family doesn't like it. Hey, they up to they can make up their minds of how they're gonna live. This is how I'm gonna live. I'm gonna rely on people. <laughs> as much as they piss me off, I need people, I'm gonna rely on them just like I'm relying on you guys now. Right. So you have been nominated for the Austin Blues Society Award for Best Artist in 2018. It's best the artist joke in the world. Is it really? Okay. <laughs> what about? I'm going to tell, tell you what. I'm going to tell you why they have it every year. They know exactly who the best harmonica player is. And it ain't no white guy. I changed that shit when I walked in. When I got off the plane, I, charged, I changed that. Because I had a plan on how I was going to behave. I didn't care how they behaved. But the thing of them, first of all, the Blue Society is all white. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Now, you... Well, I won't say any more on that, but they are. Now, they sit there, they give nothing, absolutely nothing back to the black community. Nothing. And they get grants from the government to give us nothing. They don't give us gigs. When they have gigs, they have as many white guys on there as they can. You know? And, and I'll tell you, there ain't no white blues musicians. Well, there are. Okay. Omar Dykes is one of them. Okay. Mike Keller is one of them. All those guys that play like in the Texas Horns and uh, East Side Kings, they're blues people. And you know who was part, who was part of the person that uh, helped uh, put a big input on the East Side Kings? Who? You're talking to him. Birdman. Birdleg. Bird Birdman. Birdman. <laughs> the Birdman with the Birdleg. Uh, <laughs> we'll just call you Bird. I'm an activist. I can't sit by and keep myself quiet when there's all these indignities going around. Both in the ghetto, or out of the ghetto, anywhere. People get killed anywhere for no reason at all, minding your own business. Yeah. Well, that's a crime. And it goes beyond color of skin because you don't let one group go for killing somebody and then punish another group for doing the same thing. Because there's a contradiction in that. There is. But my job is to, my job is to protect the people and, and, and 
protect the concept of the police, the real concept of the police, which doesn't tell you to play like anybody else. There's no way, in any book I've ever read about the blues, and I've been studying it all my life, I've never heard one thing, but well, Little Walter's the best, so we should play like him. Right, right. That concept does not exist among black musicians. Well, I think it's always it uh, getting like better. Huh? It's not aspiring to play like someone else. It's just, it's about being no, yourself, no, only a better yeah. version of yourself. Well, see, what they do is they want you to learn from me. Okay. Right. And that means if you learn from me, you become just as proficient as me. They can get rid of me because they still have me through you. Of course, they don't see it that way. They say, well, I got a white person and got rid of the nigger. You know? And I that's see. basically what this blue society has done. And I'm, and I'm mad at them. They nominate me. Nomination don't mean shit because then they turn around and choose a white boy to do it. Yeah. I mean, I should be up for best entertainer, not just a harmonica player because there ain't no entertainers like, in Austin like me and there ain't none in California like me. No, I understand they call you the Blues Tornado. The Blues Tornado. Well, you know what? That, came, and that came from a guy who's actually one of my better friends right now. Um, when I would do this album, uh, no, this is before. I was playing this little tiny club called Buckets in Austin, and this guy walks up to me, and he has an old record of mine called Good Time Blues. And he said, are you bird leg? I said, yeah. He said, I found this at a, at a uh, um, garage sale in Louisiana. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, uh, I mean, I see some crazy stuff about my past that people recorded. I didn't record them. They recorded them. But anyway... I go, what? You know, it's just it's just so crazy how whatever you do, you know, people follow you. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know, it's like the time I jumped into a crowd, they tore my clothes off. Uh, <laughs> how did that, that go? Just, Was that the women did. that tore the clothes off there? No, no, they didn't tear. They just tore the shirt down. But yeah. I like to say tear the tear the clothes off. Okay? Yeah, it sounds, it sounds better. <laughs> well, we, but it, you know, yeah. We're gonna. We have a video, the Blues Tornado, in oh. Texas. Do you want to talk about that? Well, what are you gonna? What are you gonna be showing? Can We're you give me a hint of what you're showing, Jackie? You know Texas. Where it says the Blues Tornado in Texas. Texas. Um, and where? In Texas. Um, oh, let's okay. Just, let's then I know. I know where to start. Okay, we're gonna okay. we're gonna play it and surprise, surprise. Let's go. <laughs> There's no song called the Blues Tornado. <laughs> bird leg, the Blues Tornado. They're Texas. referring to you as the bird, the, the Blues Tornado <laughs> in Texas. That's because of, that's because of my energy and my literally destruction on stage. I know, I've seen it. <laughs> let's go, let's roll it. Come on, the Blues Tornado. All right, all right, all right. I don't know. We're kind of like this. And I'll be decent, okay? Okay, okay, okay. let's start with whatever we're doing. This is an alien, right? Hey. Oh, red, bright lights. One, two, three.
are back welcome. welcome to this lovely december thursday evening boy christmas is next week christmas is next week who are we i don't know where we are the bling sisters i'm shelly <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm having a she's having I'm, a meltdown I'm over Silver here Shells. i'm cindy jenkins and we are the, the bling, bling sisters, sisters. we actually practice this but anyway <laughs> anyway we are interviewing <laughs> Our guest, our our ninety sixth guest, Bird Leg Pittman. That's right, and he is uh, he is a character. I think for sure. I think you're a character, sir. You're a good character. Well, you know what? You we know like what? you. That's a necessary. That's a necessary thing. Yeah, that's not an accident. That's part of that was part of Bird Leg's whole plan when he moved to California. Good. Yeah. You know? So, what's the biggest? Uh, Sorry. Uh, what, uh, what's what's the biggest achievement you feel you've made in your musical career? Willie Dixon, number one. The Lucerne Blues Festival in, in Switzerland. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and almost every show in Spain. Do you I mean, it's just awesome. What happens is you have to rise to the to the occasion. Mm -hmm. Not many musicians can rise to the occasion. You see them on record, they sound beautiful. You see them live, they're born. Right. Yeah. You know? Some are, some so, aren't. So, and plus, what I noticed with the with the Oakland blues scene, that it was actually dying, and I was there to pick it up. Because number one, I brought enthusiasm, I brought energy, and I brought a different style of playing. And they just hated it. For, oh, that boy can't play, man. He can't play what he's saying. Because I wasn't copying anybody. Right, right. So you were doing was, your own uh, thing. Now we're losing, right. we're losing your 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 countenance here. We can't see your face. If you can, oh, come a little closer. There we go. There we are. Okay. All there right. We go. Okay. So, uh, and you don't like the studio so much. You really like the stage, but you have. I like the stage. You like I the, live stage. For the stage. I, I don't. I mean, I. I've been. I, this last recording I did was pretty good with the East Side Kings, the compilation CD, with me and all these other Texas blues people. It was great, man. I'll tell you. 
uh, and that's the only time I really had any real fun in the studio because they had the, the studio was big. It was big enough for me to have some room to move. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if I can't move, I can't. I can't do anything because I'm leaving an important part of my show out of it. The movement, even in yeah. the studio, you just can't stand there and play your harmonica and the little thing. Well, gotta... yeah, well, I'm gonna tell you why. Because they treated me like I was a dust boy. In every studio I went in, the band played. Then I'd go in and put harmonica on top of it. Uh-huh. Well, that was no damn fun. I'm not <laughs> even playing with the band. You know? Yeah. And that happened for years. That happened for years. Even one of my best albums, the one in uh. The one called Meet Me on the Corner. Meet Me on the Corner. You know? Yeah. That was one of my best albums in the Bay Area, for sure. For sure. So uh, I was going to ask you a question. I, I, where, do you get, where did you get your nickname? Uh, and cool Papa <laughs> and Sugar Pie and everybody has all these, you know, nicknames. Where did you get your bird well, leg? Well, you know, my legs aren't that big, by the way. <laughs> well, if you saw my legs, that's what you do. You'd laugh. No, Skinny no, little legs. I wouldn't laugh. Skinny legs. If you, if you saw these little birds, they, they look like a bird. My whole body looks like a bird. I got nice thighs, and I got poor little bear calves. <laughs> <laughs> so now, did the somebody else look, give you that, that name, or did you give it to yourself? Well, yeah, hey, look here. You know, my friend saw me coming out of the shower. I had my towel wrapped around me. And she just said, look at them little bird legs. And that was it. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> yeah. Because when I first came to California, they asked me my name. I couldn't think of anything. I said, well, shit, you know, try bird leg. And I said, bird leg. You know, and so I made sure I spelled it in a unique way, if you notice. Right. Spelled with two Gs, no S. Yeah, just like a I real know. name. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> right. I, I like the double anybody. G's. Look here. I've been trying to get people to name their kids bird leg for the last 30 years. It has, has, not, it has not worked. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, well, I think you can keep trying. Yeah. It's yeah. not going to happen in my family. Yeah, it's, it's fun to do that. I mean, see, the <laughs> thing that people feel like fail to do on stage, they don't capture their childhood, they play like adults. Uh-huh. And adults, adults are. By that time, they're so stiff, they, can, they don't even know they can dance or anything. But where you grow up, where you grow, when you grow up around the music, you may not know the technical parts of music, but you know how it should sound. And how it you know? should make you feel, too. If you, were you know? this, if you were listening to the blues ever since you were three or four years old, you either liked it or you didn't. Yep. Well, I just happened to have loved it, you know. I love Jerry Lee Lewis. Jerry Lee Lewis was a character, <laughs> that guy. Mm-hmm. You know? And I love Chuck Berry and Little Richard and all them. You know, did, I did never you... got to see him. Oh, you never got to? You never got to meet him? Hmm. I didn't. I didn't get to meet Chuck Berry, but I met BB King, John Lee Hooker. Well, you know, I met John Lee Hooker because yeah. John Lee Hooker certainly told you about that. But, um, <clears throat> and I never was a star addict. You know. I wasn't like when when a star comes around me, I talk to them like they're regular folks. Uh, yeah, you yeah. Know, because, because you don't put anybody above you. No, that's... that may sound selfish, but that's that's a necessary thing. You first. We and have maybe your husband and your kids and your grandkids and all that too, but it's you first. That is so important. You have to determine what kind. You have to determine what kind of person you want to be. And this is what I want to be. This is what I am. You ever hear the saying, I am the blues? I am the blues? I am the blues? No, well, but... In the, in the, no, 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 no. Let me, let me show you something. Okay. I have the right to say that because I'm a thoroughbred. I'm not some guy trying to copy somebody else. You right. copy somebody else, you, you lose your legitimacy, whether you know it or not. Your uniqueness. Say, okay, you did a lot of Chuck Berry, man, we love it. But what can you do? Do you write songs? That's one of the first things I get. Do you ever write songs? Of course I do. <laughs> hmm. You do. You wrote you wrote uh, songs on your your album. Eight eight songs. You've written eight songs. I bet you've yeah. written a lot more. No, no, no. I wasn't going to do a lot more because I, I didn't want to do that many. You know, but, and because you... I wanted to do uh, you know half and half maybe because I wanted to show people that I know how to add some other things to the blues too. All right. And you like upbeat. You like to write dance blues, correct? 
I'm like, I'm like, you know what I did? Because the blues are so sad then. I mean, it really was sad, right? Nobody wanted to go hear them. And then I came on the scene. I, I actually made the blues more popular in the Bay Area because I was the one who wouldn't give up playing it. Other people had chance, you know, had better chances because they were willing to do what the producers told them to. I, uh, uh, this is this is what I do. This is the way I do it. Okay. So you guys can work on it. We get in the studio. We can do it. You know. What... And all those and all those songs on uh, about the uh, on the on the first TV I did down here in Texas. All those songs were written by either me or this guy named Carol Perry. Uh-huh. He was a good friend of mine. He passed. He was an old guy too. <laughs> you know, I, well, I, I'm only 15 years away from being 90, so I guess I just shut up here. Oh my <laughs> gosh! So, Bird Lake, what do you have planned for the future? Uh, you know, either with or without COVID, do you have do you have plans? Are you going to keep touring another uh, another yeah, album? When, yeah, when we can travel again, I'll probably be in Spain. That would be my first tour because they were the ones the first one they were the ones who had me booked already. They never they never uh, uh, canceled the gig. Yeah. What they did was they uh, postponed it. Okay. So I still have I still have shows in uh, in uh, Holland, Spain, and England to do first. Fun. Too. Then I was thinking about Brazil because the Brazil one, the Brazil loves Brazil loves birthday. Mm. <laughs> you know so. I'll go down there with them, and then I may go to Mexico. I don't know. What's they not to love, right? Huh? What's not to love? Go with that. Life is short. Life is short. You said short. they well, love yeah. bird leg in Brazil. I said, what's not to love? Well, you know what? You have whatever you have accumulated, because I don't know what all I've uh, accumulated. I just know I've done some things. Um <clears throat> You put it that all together, you know what you come out with? Human beings are all the same, whether they deny it or not. We're all the fucking same. We may have superficial differences, but a tear is a tear in Spain, and that same tear is in the U.S. too. You know? Agreed. So people are just, I don't know why everybody's fighting everybody because they're different looking. Because they're not you letting know? us play live music. That's why everybody's upset. Because we can't go well, hear live music. Live music does help. But yeah. it has to be a real live music. Not people up there faking. You know? Well, come play in Santa Rosa. We want to play, come play yeah, here. We get you a gig at Redwood Cafe. That's right. I'll tell you what. You got you guys do the promotion. I'll be glad to come there and play. Right, we'll Ooh, do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll do it. It's a deal. Mm -hmm. Well, we're wrapping. And I'll, t I'll tell you what. Let me, uh, right after the COVID, let me go through my schedule and see what I'm doing. Okay. I will be doing something right after the COVID. Okay. All right. Excellent. And I'll give you guys a call and say, okay, I'm going to be in Spain, so and so, and then I'm going to be in Brazil, and then I'm going to be in Holland and England. Then I'll come back home. Good. 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 Because good. I don't want to book anything for for you guys now, not knowing what exactly. I have on the table. You know. Well. Bird Lake, we've really, really enjoyed talking with you. And as always, we appreciate your willingness to you know, participate in our interview. <laughs> it was a you're, pleasure. You're to come to my show. You're we, to come to my will. show. That's what you ought to do. That, we yeah. definitely Fly to will. Spain. It's in the future. Front row tickets. I see it in the future. Yes, I see a lot of things in the future. Yeah, I, I see. Yeah. 20... I'll come to you or you'll come to me. That's right. Hey, that Bird Lake, is... yeah. I understand yes. you sing the blues. And I've got so what? I've got a song. I understand you sing the blues, and yes. I've got a song. Why I sing the blues? Now this is a live. Now, where the hell did you get that from? Where no, uh, YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> why I sing the blues? That's yeah. Why I sing the blues? Can you tell me about that just a minute? Oh, it's a BB King song. Mm-hmm. And when I heard it, you know. I even asked him, I asked him at, at, at the uh, San Francisco Blues Festival, would he mind if I did? He said, Bird, no, no way. He said, no way, you can do any song of mine you want to do. Oh, and, nice. You know, and that's one of the songs I, I don't really do much B.B. King, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> because I'm busy trying to express myself here. Right, right. Yeah, that's, yeah. 
You have to express yourself. Okay, well, let's roll the tape. Let's say good night. Good night, everyone. Good night to everyone. Happy holidays. Be safe. Wear your mask. Socially distance. Uh, oh yeah. It's uh, uh, it's a big mess out there, kind of. So just yeah. But you know what? We have resiliency as human beings. We're going to lick this thing. Yes, we one are. Way or another. Yes, we you know, are. People invented it, and people can uninvent it. You know, they're, they're busy lying around and trying to get as much money out of us as they can. They want us to buy $20 masks. Talking about the, the, the gourmet of masks. I don't need no gourmet. I don't want the thing covering my face anymore. No. <laughs> I, I get by that CVS. They're great little that. masks. Anyway, I do it out of respect for my fellow human beings. Right. Thank you, exactly. Bird Leg. All right. Remember, become a become an organ donor. Be sure to check that on your real ID. I don't give. A, you know what? I am basically an organ. Yeah, I'm an organ donor from years ago in California. Good. Because I don't care. I don't care what you do with my body when I'm gone. Right. That's right. Yeah. Mine's. You know, I'm gone. You know. Mine's, hopefully, I'll leave a mark somewhere that we you guys know that I once lived and played here and there and all that you know i believe you've made a mark bird leg you've made a mark i believe you've made a mark good for you you've you've made made your mark your mark i think you've made okay thank you hey i don't know those things (laughs) (laughs) okay we're gonna we're gonna say good night and roll the last video i always save the best for last i really like this one out of the three the best Oh, okay. Good night, everybody. Good night, family. Good night, Nafamara. Okay. Good night, Mom. Bye, Mom. Yeah. Good night, John Boy. (laughs) Good night. (laughs) Oh, ta ta. Ta ta. Thank you. Thank you.